to uh, continue the lecture on the excretion and, and we will see about the how the urine is concentrated and what the, how the urine is forming in the system and the excretory system. And I will uh, go back to the document camera now. See the mammalian kidney over here. Now you can see this. Uh, um, we are going to look into the urine uh, formation. The renal artery, uh, which are loaded with uh, all uh, um, ammonia, the urea, which is being produced from the liver and other toxic materials and other components, and, and, and they are coming from the renal artery, and they enter into the kidney, where the kidney will do the, the process, the mechanism, and for filtration and and then the concentrations and uh, you know reabsorption everything is taking place in the kidney and then after removal this blood which is going through the renal vein okay so the renal artery feed the blood to the kidney and from kidney all purified or removed uh, after removal of all toxic products or ammonia in the form of urea and other ions and and then uh, it, the purified blood or uh, the removal after removal it, it went through the renal vein. The kidney then um, you know get the the urine after the concentration and and then uh, with all the reabsorption everything pushed the uh, product to the ureter and ureter to the bladder where you can hold the urine for a while maybe hours and then uh, you know then through urethra and we are passing to the world. So this is the process how the urine is formed and that is going to be eliminated. The question is what happens here in the kidney? So that's the process that we are going to discuss today. Okay. Initially we are going to see the process that is in the non-selective filtration. As I mentioned before in my earlier slides or so, where we did study uh, when, when the products of our, you know, nitrogenous products are the urea, which is going a, as, as a filtration. Suppose this is the, the process which is taking place in the kidney and this cartoon will show that some pores and the pores will allow all the molecules, you know, it is not discriminating you know, the, the, that's non-selective size, you know, the, any size of the molecule can go through here, okay, just it's a filter, everything is going over there in the filter. So, it's not like only urea should go in or glucose go, can, can go in or only toxic material can filter through, no, it is not that case. So, this filter mechanism is a non-selective and all this, any size of this molecule can pass through, okay. Then what happened, there is a secretion some fluid secretion which is coming out from the another part of um, the, you know, the kidney where we are going to discuss soon. And uh, when the secretion as well as the molecules which are going to be here, and uh, this is going to discriminate. Now, not all of them are getting passed into the urine. No, not all of them. But there are some parts which is selectively absorbed, reabsorbed back to the, back to blood circulation, back to the body, okay, back to the body. So there, there's some, number three, reabsorptive, and they are active selective. It selects certain molecule. It is not selecting for the urea, but it is select for glucose or certain amino acids. So what happened in a part of the kidney will reabsorb function, and when it reabsorbs, those unwanted material which is present here and that is pushed forward and that is the one which we are excreting out. So please remember that the concentration of the urine which is occurring after the secretions and after the reabsorption of this material then is going into that. So this is another way to express I mean how the water recovery um, you know which is taking place at the end 
and uh, we are going to discuss how the, the urine osmolarity is going to be much uh, greater uh, than the blood osmolarity that attract of, uh, you know, more of water molecule and thereby the water recovery. So that's why the urine getting more diluted and, um, uh, you, know, you know, that's excreted out. So this process which we, we are going to see, the first one is the filtration and second one is the secretion and third one, third part is the reabsorptive phase, this phase, this is the third phase. And then what happened when we push it out, uh, it is going to be concentrated. By concentration, we are going to discuss now how this is going to be concentrated. And once it's concentrated and they are at the another uh, level with a higher osmolarity gradient in the urine because of the component there and then water will come back here so that you have a urination which is occurring. So this part um, uh, as, a, as, a, as a schematic diagram. Now let us go into some details of, um, um, of how this process is taking place, okay. In the renal pyramid, renal pyramids, when you see the cross section of kidney, in the kidney, if you say this is a, a, a kidney structure, when you cross section or inside the kidney, you get some sort of a, a cells like this, you know. So it goes like this. So these uh, these tissues form, as uh, if you know the histology of the kidney looks like. Then I'm I'm going to give uh, a piece of information now how it looks like this. So it it looks like a pyramidal structure. Look at this pyramidal structure. It something like a cone. Uh, of, uh, you know, so it, it's something like a filtering mechanism of how this funnel-like structure is, looks like in a, in a larger sense, it is some um, uh, reactions, I mean, how they are going to concentrate, like a funnel-like structures. These funnel-like structures in the kidney, that's in the renal pyramid. I'm just drawing right how the funnel-like structure looks like here, like this, okay. And here, yeah, let's, okay. Now, there are some pores over here, pores, okay. And uh, the water molecules are coming here, okay, or you can say, the the blood is here the blood okay and uh, this process what is this one we call it as collecting duct where the urine collecting duct collecting duct okay and uh, the water is coming here i put that one here okay and and here the blood concentration it's the blood is uh, the is a three hundred. I put it like this: three hundred, okay, milli osmolar concentration. Probably you may be able to see this one here, like a three hundred milli osmolar concentration of the solutes or the substance, or all glucose and and amino acids and and all the fatty acids. And, and all those materials are, are there here for 300 milliosmolar. This is the concentration in 300 milliosmolar. Okay. When this uh, this is descending, when the blood is full here, and um, by osmosis, what happens here? In the collecting duct. Okay. When the water is removed from here. Okay. By osmosis, uh, you know, the water is being removed by osmosis. When you, it does, you know, here also is the blood and when, when you, when you remove this water from, you know, from, from this uh, by osmosis, it's coming out the collecting duct. What will happen here, you know, this less and less water is coming up, you know, from this whole unit. When, when the water is removing and even it, it, it descended, what happened when, when you have a 300 uh, milli osmolar, when it water is removed from this, you know, water is removed from this, this is slowly, it is getting concentrated, okay? So what happened here, the, when the water is removed by osmosis, the 300 milli osmolar is diluted form. When water is removed from here, it is going to be concentrated. 
So at the end, what will happen, all these water molecules are removed from here, most of them is removed, so the osmolarity is going to increase, 1200 milli osmolar. Okay. So here from 300 milli osmolar, which is a diluted in the blood with the, the substance or the, you know, the concentration of different salts and solutes and all the products over there, 300 milli osmolar. Why? Because of the higher concentration of water. So when you remove water by osmosis, by this collecting duct mechanism with the pores, it, when it, the removal of water, that makes this blood uh, 300 and uh, milli osmolar and, and, and that the collecting duct when, 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 when it is coming down, you know, when you get this uh, urine is at 1200 milli osmolar concentration, it is going to be concentrated. So it forms when you see grade, you know, just here 300 and then 400, 600 like that, you know. It's a, so we call it as here concentration gradient is formed concentration gradient is formed with respect to sodia and urea, sodium and urea. Then when the urine descend, okay, when the urine descend, descends, okay, in the collecting duct, the urine is descending in the collecting duct. Okay, the urine is descending in the collecting duct, Water is removed. Water is removed. Water removed by osmosis. Okay. Then the final urine concentration here, the final urine concentration, which is which is coming over here, right? From because this is the blood and and this is the urine. So the final urine concentration. I'll write it in a separate paper. Final urine concentration 1200 milli osmolar. Milli osmolar. And this is much greater than blood. Because the blood value is how much? 300 milli osmolar. And then what happened? This fluid. This fluid is getting to the duct, that fluids get into the duct, and that is in the collecting duct. And the fluid getting into collecting duct. Okay. Now, the urine formation in the nephron. Uh, that is the fundamental unit, okay. What we have seen here, the pyramidal ure, urinal pyramids and, and what happens here, and, 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 and this is put together, okay, when we, we simply see the histology of uh, the nephron, that is the nephron is the fundamental unit, okay. Urine formation, urine formation, in nephron, N E P H R O N, nephrons. The nephrons are the fundamental unit. Nephrons, they are the basic unit or fundamental units where the, so the product, everything in a urine or urea, everything secretion, whatever I'm talking about, it's happening here. Fundamental unit. All this filtration and uh, also, you know, the uh, uh, blood coming in, and filtration is occurring, and kind of concentration, everything is occurring in these nephrons. Okay, as I, in other words, they are the nephrons. They constitute with the renal pyramidal cells, which we have seen earlier. Now, let us see the same principle. Whatever we have seen earlier in the filtration unit, we are going to see in the um, in the subsequent. Uh, uh, picture, okay, what I'll, I'll draw in another one, so that's easy to understand, it is, it is a nephron, fundamental unit, again the same thing what you have, you have seen now, but I'm um, just in a different way, okay, that's, 
uh, where the filtration mechanism which is going to take place here and this is the uh, renal artery and then which is coming here and then it's going back it's going over and then here this is on okay okay and then it goes like this a little bit like thing is going over there all right number one Let's see here where the filtering mechanism, Bowman's capsule, we call it, number one. Okay. This is the basic unit of nephron. Remember, nephrons. This is the nephron, one nephron. One and two. Proximal tubules. I'll write it separately. And... Um, Four is a distal tubule, and the number three is the loop. Yeah, and the number five is the collecting duct. Okay, so I'll write it. What is one and everything? Okay, one is the filter where the blood is coming here by the renal artery, and this is the filtering which is occurring here. Filter part of vascular system part of vascular system vascular means arteries and you know vein that's put together we got vascular system okay. and then number two is proximal tubule proximal Tubule. Three here, this one. It's the loop of Henle. Loop of Henle. H E N L E. Loop of Henle. And then number four is the distal tubules. Distal tubule. And number five, collecting duct. Just I want to, you know, give an idea. I mentioned this is a renal pyramid. This is like a cartoon, okay? Collecting duct and, and filtrations and everything put together. But at the same time, if you want to see in detail how this blood is being, I mean, the product is being coming in and duct everything is taking place in one unit, that unit is the nephron. So. This is the area where the filtering is occurring. And this is the area where the proximal tubules and, and then uh, you have a Henle and then your distal tubule and then your concentration which is coming on the collecting duct of the urine which is coming over here. Okay. We will see the function now. The Bowman capsule and the blood vessels, we call it as a glomerular, glomerular. Glomerular, okay, glomerular. They attributed to filtration, this one. And then the tubules is the active secretion part. Proximal tubule, it's an active secretion. It secretes here. Active secretion. I put it like that way. So the component, some of them, they secrete. And when it passes through, so it's filtration which is occurring, secretion, and it's passing through. Okay. And then what happened about the four here, this arm, and this is going to be where the absorption occur, these tubules, where it is being reabsorbed, reabsorption which is occurring here. Secretion, and here the absorption. But what happened in the tubular, okay, the the tubular active secretion and absorption, which is also taking place here, tubular structure, this tube. 
proximal tubules and distal tubules in between there's a loop these tubules also you know with a one arm which has been active secretion and another arm which is going to be reabsorbed and thereby the concentration of urine which is occurring over here okay collecting duct that's number five it is responsible for the final concentration of urine so this is responsible for final concentration of urine so the loop of henley this part establishes the concentration gradient through which the collecting duct is passing through so the loop of henley is it's a you know in a matter of fact it, it forms a concentration gradient it creates concentration gradient whereby it can absorb certain things and then add to it that's interesting we are going to see the mechanism how the henley of loop is functioning now the concentration gradient is from how much the concentration gradient which when i talked about it it is going to be 300 milli osmolar that is on the blood to 300 milli osmolar to 1200 milli osmolar and this is the one which is in the urine this system filter this system filters how much blood per day because they as i said the the kidney is nothing but the filtration right mechanism and and we have the unit nephron unit in present inside the kidney and they used to do like um uh, 180 liters of blood liters of blood per day see this is the amount the volume of blood you know every time it goes uh, in and this filtration which is occurring how much this filter it can occur 180 liters of blood do we have that much of blood in our body no we are only the five liters of blood but imagine every time these five liters of blood is going flooding through this filtration and then coming back another round another round another round another round like that 180 liters which is going to be passing through the bowman's capsule for the filtering that that it, it records 179 liters approximately uh, uh, of water okay and also what happened 180 liters and then it is going pass and then also it is recovering recovering how much it is recovered suppose if if in the water is also going through it recovers 179 liters of water okay they recover per day here so it goes in and then what it is recovering as i mentioned here it is a recover is back onto the body so it comes in and then it goes out so that's the part which we 179 liters of water per day. that is on recovery this is recovery okay and also it recovers 1.7 kilogram of sodium okay 1.7 kilogram of sodium also recovering along with the water so it is effective system and recovers vast majority of necessary components of life so that you should understand though 180 liters of uh, blood which is filtered through and 179 which is coming out so you get how much the water and the urine concentration is approximately one liter so if you drink plenty of water and other substance which is getting in that is also added to one liter so approximately per day a human being an adult can um, eliminate uh, 1.5 liters to 2 liters if it is in less than this there's some problem or the excess of this that is also a problem so we have to maintain the amount of urine void every day so that gives signify how much uh, you know the filtering mechanism which is taking place so now let's go on to this this mechanism of filtering okay to understand the filter mechanism let us see to understand the filter mechanism okay. 
understand the filter mechanism this is occurring in the the filter in glomerular or glomerulus glo g l o m e r u l u s glomerulus of bowman capsule bowman capsule okay is something like a fist and balloon like thing suppose this is the okay this is like a balloon like cavity okay this is a balloon like cavity right and now this is a fist okay it goes and bind like this so when compared to this this one is uh, like a like like arteries and everything uh, arteries and veins and it will goes on here and this is the one which is the filtering mechanism so like a like a, here it goes cover like this you see that one so the filtering mechanism which is occurring over here and then it will it will do all the filtering it will come out so this is the one which is supply of artery so it it, it forms like this the, like a fist and a balloon like thing so if you also if you put your fist into a balloon suppose this is a balloon you know it's a gas is balloon so the balloon will uh, and put a fist into the balloon how it looks like that that's the way it it works now something like a, 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 a draw in a, in a way that's in the Bowman capsule how the Bowman capsule looks like that thing so suppose this is the balloon like thing and uh, now the blood the capillaries which is coming here and then is going here and then you know, it gives a coil coil and then come out here okay at the face so the blood is going in and um, all the blood vessels these are the blood vessels okay blood vessels so the the balloon which is tightly surrounding your face see the balloon which is tightly it's very tight surrounding to the face okay in um in, in in other words you can also look into the the other way in a cross section if you if you cut this one okay if you cut this one and then in a, in a nephron in a in a microscopic view do you see that it looks like this like um, and then at the middle you get the Bowman's capsule and you have the cells on that A, B and then it is being supplied with the arteries right the blood vessels which is going in so this is the way that you know it looks like when you see the other way around so how they arranged in the um, Bowman's capsule and there is an array the, what is the Bowman capsule how it looks like you know it comes like a like a blood capillaries which is which is uh, which is feeding okay and there is a hole in it let's see let's let's draw like that one here okay this is the blood circulation and, and then uh, it's coming out here And there is a, 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 a another part of this Bowman capsule. We call it as a photocyte. That's why I'm drawing the photocyte here. The blood is coming out. So there, there is some sort of a structural cells called as a photocyte, where you know the blood, which is uh, th these are the blood capillaries. They are the blood capillaries. We have seen the circulatory system. Okay blood capillary and blood capillaries flooding the blood in the each podocyte inside the podocyte you get uh, like this uh, the filtering uh, cells I call it like that and they are call it as podocytes it's not like blood directly coming in, in a hole, you know, just a small hole, it's coming out all the substance. No, it is not like that. But these podocytes is the one which is having the pores, and when the if it is uh, uh, flooded here, okay, all these uh, molecules of, of blood and everything which is uh, flooding, and then you know, and then it is going to the podocyte, and podocyte will will have a holes in anything, and then it is going to be removed. So the the space between this we call it as a. 50 nanomolar are the small space when you 
see one photo site and then another photo site will goes like this it goes in and out like this so so the in between this gap i'll i'll, I'll draw in a, in a different way so here okay the another one which is coming over here so the space between this is, is going to be 50 nanometer 50 nanometer it's a very small space that's what is occurring in the filtering small space and uh, the um, even the bacteria of the scale in the sense of bacteria how much the bacteria it's going to be 1000 uh, times or the 2000 uh, nanomolar so that's in the bacteria could you see this one the protocyte size it's very small from the blood into the nephron across the endothelium across the protocyte into the nephron. So that's what the blood travels, okay. From the blood, the blood is going through in the, into the nephron, okay, into the nephron, across the endothelium of the, of the blood capillaries, right, endothelium, and across the protocyte. This is the protocyte. It goes across the protocyte, and then it's entering into the nephron. So the molecule smaller than this size, okay, that's on the, the molecules less than I I'll, I'll, I'll write it here the sizes okay the molecule smaller than okay smaller than insulin okay smaller than insulin molecule pass freely pass freely across the photocytes photocytes and then a nephron okay nephrons in e p h r o n s nephrons so the gaps between the cells the cross that's on the gaps through the gaps between the cells that's on the 50 nanometer then the filter works by pressure okay now the gap between the cells the molecule escape but there must be some force behind it to push this molecule up what is that pressure I put it like this filter works the filtration works okay by pressure filtration works by pressure what pressure here in this case blood pressure blood See, if the pressure is lower, what will happen? The filtering cannot be done because filtering cannot be achieved in this sense, filter. Okay. So the fist into nephron is a non-selective process except this size. So in this case, what we have done here, only the filtration, that I put it like a fist nephron, like fist into nephron the filtering, the glomerulus, okay, nephron, okay, because you are, you are supplying the, into the fist, this is a fist, and, and, and this is a collecting duct, everything, so when you supply here, this filtering mechanism here, fist and the nephron, is, yeah, non-selective process, non-selective process, meaning it use, except the size, except the size. What size here we are talking about? Molecule smaller than the insulin. The, that is the yeah, some sort of a criteria. The insulin molecule is larger. Okay. When whatever the molecule is less than the insulin molecule, smaller than that, that can pass through anything. So that's why it is a non-selective. It is not sodium. It is not either potassium. It is not uh, selective for. Uh, for a glucose or any amino acid, no. Except insulin size, there's only the size. Every other molecule can easily pass through. Okay. That's the process. Now let us see. It passes about, as I mentioned before, how many? How much? Passes, the blood passes how much per day? 180 liters per day. Okay it enters in terms of the blood in terms of plasma blood means blood plasma 
okay blood plasma enters into nephron and not red blood cells that's very important red blood cells so so in the fist what we, we talk about you know that there's a like a balloon like a fist and, and everything which I just explained to you Bowman capsule here there is no RBC which is going only the blood plasma only is passing through so that's why 180 liters uh, per day blood it means you have to imagine 180 liters of blood plasma is passing through per day across but not red blood cell if there is a damage in this one filtering mechanism or the pore size then you get the RBCs escaping here and there is no chance of reabsorptions and everything of the red blood cells but the red blood cells become lysed because of the higher hypotonic hypertonicity of the salts and everything in the urinary tract and then if you're passing the urine with the blood if you do that and that is hematuria and that is a bit dangerous okay passing blood in the urine that is dangerous so that's why here RBC is not passing across this nephron that you should remember no RBC red blood cells okay now let us see on the some of the pictures I think you can refer in your textbook it's an interesting one where you can you will find uh, the flow of, uh, of the glomerular filtration and Bowman's capsules and uh, different types of um, efferent and afferent uh, arterioles and everything. Please refer the book for the pictures, okay? Refer the book. I write it here. For the how they, they supplied and, and then um, it's been out. Something like this. It looks as I'm drawing very schematic diagram so you can also refer the, the details in the book where the small y the different values and 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 i just draw in a different way for the bowman's capsules like this will come in here come in here um, here like this okay and there you will get all this And then it's coming over here okay. so you get the supply filtration and then it's coming down okay flow controlled by this flow of uh, of this blood which is being controlled by vasoconstriction so there is some vasoconstriction it will flow everything is gone out it is it will close uh, of constrict the, the narrow air and then check change is taking place and then it, 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 everything is, is being pushed out and then it's open when it, it, it's empty so vasoconstriction opposite is vasodilation which is dilation of the blood vessel but this vasoconstriction which is the control and this is the efferent artery here which is coming out here plus vasa recta and the high resistant uh, outflow pathway this is the high resistance of the outflow pathway here and here in this one where the filtered one filtered filtered is going out so you can also check the uh, in the picture in the photo site in your textbook okay I'm not going to draw all photo sites and also you can see we, we have to see the proximal tubules okay you have to see something like a proximal tubules imagine we have seen um, I've, uh, I just I want to make sure you understand the uh, proximal tubules which we have given here this one here this area proximal tubules number two which I see this this area how what the secretion part we will see that part now okay proximal tubules where the secretion which is occurring right like I, I put it in in, in, in in a short form like this okay like this and then there's a loop 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 and then it goes like this and then that right so we are concentrating upon this too that's on the proximal tubules proximal tubule what is the function of proximal tubule 
it secretes something. What secretion? It involves in active secretion. Active secretion. Okay, active secretion of what? Unwanted material. Active secretion of unwanted, unwanted material. Toxic products and, and some other metabolic product which there is no need for our body. So these are unwanted materials. So when it secretes all of them, then the the reabsorption, the distal tubules, what that will do, reabsorption will take place in the distal tubules. That's for the wanted material. Because in the wanted material, substance, biochemicals, like a glucose, right? As I mentioned, 180 liters of blood uh, plasma which is coming out, including the glucose. And then finally, the glucose and amino acid is reabsorbed in the distal tubules, okay? So, and also, the, we used to secrete in the 60 to 70 percent of water also there and 90 percent of bicarbonate, HCO3 minus bicarbonate, okay? And we also secrete in that 100 percent of glucose, which is going over there, all the blood glucose, which is going on the filtrate, and amino acids. But ultimately, what? They are, all, most of them, they move all the glucose molecules, amino acids are recovered. But if there is an excess of glucose, because the recovering phase, there is a threshold level. Probably they said uh, 180 or uh, 200 uh, milligram per 100 ml. That, that is the limit it can recover. So if the blood concentration exceeds like a 200, uh, more than, you know, 200 or 300 milligram per 100 ml, if it exceeds that limit of glucose, it cannot absorb, then rest of them is pushed to the urine and that is the product where there's an insufficient of insulin, which is the insufficient use of glucose, excess glucose in the blood. So it is not being recovered 100% because there is some limitation here in the recovery for the glucose and thereby rest of them is eliminated in urine and that is the glucose urea, that is the uh, uh, diagnosis for the diabetes, okay? We'll see now in the regulation and the release of uh, calcium and phosphate here. It also involve, okay, regulation because of the recovery and secretion, regulation of release of calcium and phosphate. So the secretions and recovery is also play a major role to regulate the calcium and phosphate. And especially in response to this, this regulation in response to, in response to parathyroid hormone, parathyroid, we will see in regulation, parathyroid hormone, parathyroid hormone. So the proximal tubule maximizes internal surface area like a spherical tubules, okay? So we will see how the proximal tubules uh, maximize its surface area. Proximal tubules, proximal tubule. It, 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 if you cr cut section, cross-section of that, you know, if the tubule is something like that, if you cut it and then if you see under the microscope, you will find a, a folder structure like this, okay? But what happens, individually they are cells, okay? They're cells, 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 like this, okay? They're cells. So they are the nucleus, 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 nucleus. So the concentration which is passing through over here, when the more components of uh, the fluid which is, so it will contract towards this, so it can increase its size, so that the active part of the secretion. 
So we can say that uh, in the blood vessel, which is, uh, which is going over, this is the nucleus, in the Bowman filtration mechanism, the more blood is coming out, so it, 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 it expands, it expands, it expands over there. And, and, and the here, you know, here inside this, you get like a microvilli, microvilli, just like in small intestines, microvilli are present that increase further the surface area of the absorptions and everything, okay? So the expansion and absorptions and everything put together. So that's what these are here, you will find the microvilli, which is sitting over there, okay? And then this is the lumen where the secretion is occurring. So the optimized uh, for recovery of material out of lumen. Lumen is the one where the, all the material is passing by. So it is optimized and through the microvilli recovering. And uh, using a lot of active and co-transport mechanism. So in the, in the um, secretion, the proximal tubules, you get how this material, because if from the blood, if the blood vessels and the, from the blood it passing through here, the secretion, you, you have to have a active and co-transporters, transport mechanism. That's the part that you should understand. What is that active and uh, the, the transport mechanism? Just I'll give you a break and then we will start in a second. Okay, now let's go on to the, um, the transporters. I think I want to uh, recollect your earlier class on suppose this is a cell and um, I'm just drawing a one cell okay okay this is another cell that is this is one cell another one another one another different cell where you will find here the blood side and here the lumen where the you know the, the urine concentrate or coming up so what happened, these cells, they have adaptations of the, with using the transporting process, like a co-transporters, like, a, you know, using a, the air from inside of the cell to the outside, what happened? Sodium is doing, but this is being linked with a potassium is coming in, okay. And this process is driven by ATP molecule, you know, energizing to ADP, ADP and PI. So you get this is a potassium. So when potassium is coming in, a sodium is going out. Okay, this is from the blood. So it's concentration. At the same time, when it does, you know, it will also will um, will, will here how the reabsorptions this from the glucose molecule from if the sodium is going out, then the glucose molecule can reabsorb there. Glucose is present in the inside of the cell. Where this glucose is coming from? From the lumen, the reabsorption pattern here, where the transporters, where the sodium co-transporter, sodium is coming in from this reabsorption, glucose also in the reabsorption from the lumen, because initially you know much of um, the blood plasma where the 100 percent of glucose and amino acids is coming into the lumen of those cells and the filtering cells. Now it should be re-taken up, okay? at the sodium and also from the glucose and the glucose is going in. And when the sodium is coming in at the same time uh, a, a hydrogen ion is driven out. This is a uh, sodium hydrogen antiport mechanism. Hydrogen from inside and it pumps out at the same time sodium is getting in. So you get more sodium is getting into the cell from the lumen. And, and also the glucose also getting in along with this transporter, which is present in the membrane. And then when the cell is enriched with the glucose, then the glucose is getting out and getting into the blood. At the same time, sodium is also getting into the blood. At the same time, the blood, the potassium is going in. So this is an active transporters and these are the core transporters. And uh, this is the mechanism how the molecules, the proximal tubules, where the active secretion, 
and also it is taken up by these cells okay also you had to remember about uh, the uh, picture of the electron microscopes and um, how the brush border looks like in, in from your textbook and at the same time I want to discuss about the um, the distal tubules okay we will see about the distal tubule so if you if you remember in the in the mechanism of the distal tubules like this it goes really like and then it's a loop and then uh, here and then here right isn't it so here we are talking about this this distal tubules and the distal tubules in a way it it, it, it bends over like um, um, you know it, it's not like directly what I am drawing like this but in a matter of fact it is a folded structure which is occurring this is going to be folded one okay so that is the you um, know it has active reabsorption distal tubules active reabsorption okay and it filter 5 percent to 10 percent filtered load whatever the filtered here 5 to 10 percent of the filtered load is reabsorbed here the reabsorption which is occurring there okay and he had uh, it has a short microvilli microvilli so which is using the surface area and it has a, an interesting uh, transport system this one distal tubule uh, interesting transport system interesting transport system from proximal tubules it is different type of transport mechanism proximal tubule and the transporter for the sodium ion transporters they are they have the uh, sodium in a plus transporter percent transporting protein that's called transporters transporters are present in the distal tubules okay let us see how this uh, um, this transport which is occurring is a cell okay there again I just draw the transporter and this is the blood side and this is lumen where the urine is coming out all this wanted material okay getting in as a potassium and then sodium is pushed back and then here the sodium chloride I mean how the chloride ion is coming out here sodium goes in in a plus and the chloride also is coming along with that one so we call it as NaCl uh, sodium and chloride co-transport 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 means just like a company sodium is uh, seeking the company of the chloride whenever you transport from outside to inside that's a co-transport here sodium is coming in potassium is going out so the mechanism we call it as a sodium potassium antiport okay and this one by driven by ATP molecule ADP and PI ADP and PI okay so this mechanism like a sodium and uh, potassium sodium potassium antiport mechanism antiport but at the same time using the ATP and uh, and this one sodium and chloride act as a co-transport so driven by ubiquitous sodium potassium ATPase this one this one is driven by sodium potassium ATPase okay and it forms like a sodium gradient it can form a sodium gradient using this the orientation of the tubule is what different in a realistic view the orientation of the tubule that's what I explained to you the tubule which we have seen here this tubule the orientation is not directly straight one but 
it, it goes like this, you know, the, this tubule. It, it is going, uh, bending like this. That's the orientation. And it is also, you know, intervening near the blood vessels and glomerular and everything. I mean, I'll just, I'll draw in a, in a different way. So, suppose if this is uh, the Bowman capsule, which is coming out of these tubules, okay. And uh, you have the Henley loop and everything. So you, you have like this, this loop which is going like this, okay. And then the distal tubules will, 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 will go like this. So these are the distal tubules. This is a shaded one. So up to this, this is the proximal and this is the loop of Henle. So what happened, this is the, where this the, your, uh, your blood vessels is coming in, okay, and then it's going back. So so this distal tubule, it, it, it's just like a snake, you know, it, it's not like directly what I say, you know, it, it's not like a, like a straight. It comes out here and goes on here and the collecting tube, you know, it is not like this. So this, this, this part is folded back and then it's going like this. So that's why this I'm, I'm saying this distal tubule is a different type of orientation and it's going through the blood vessels and everything in a, in a realistic view. This is the way it looks like. Okay. Several action takes place here at the glomerular, here, glomerular Bowman capsule, okay, according to the blood pressure. Also you can, you can check into the, you know, into your textbook how this is being beautifully arranged. Distal tubules are uh, containing the glomerular, okay. Now, we will see about the collecting duct, okay, proximal tubules we have seen, and now we'll see the collecting duct. Collecting duct, okay. Collecting duct is something like a descending tube, right? You know, this is a collecting duct, so it comes out the tube is a collecting duct. Here the filtration and the secretion and then reabsorption and this is a collecting duct, okay. So if I just draw here in a, in a way like this, this is a collecting, this is a tube loop and uh, it goes on the distal tubules and now you have a collecting tube. So we are talking about this, this is the one, collecting tubules, collecting duct. And it is a descending tube here, yeah. descending, descending tube, collecting that. It involves, what is the function of the collecting tube again? It involved, involved in reabsorption, reabsorption, involved reabsorption by a highly regulated way by highly regulated way, regulated way. So the collecting tube or collecting duct, which is a, a arranged in a descending tube like here, and it involved in the reabsorption, that's reabsorption of material, and by the regulated way, it's very interesting to me how the molecules which is going to be recovered, right, reabsorbed. Uh, let's see the water, which uh, the water not being absorbed because whatever the thing which is coming out here, so the water they are not absorbed by proximal tubule, proximal tubule. Water is not absorbed by proximal tubule, but it is reabsorbed in collecting tubule. That is reabsorbed in collecting duct, in collecting duct. So that's very important. See, 180 liters of plasma which is coming out, including the water. As I mentioned, 179 um, uh, 
liters of water is recovered. That water is not recovered by proximal tubules here, the proximal tubules, but instead it is reabsorbed in the collecting duct and this is the collecting duct. So here it is reabsorbed, water is recovered. Okay. This is sensitive to, this collecting duct is sensitive to vasopressin, I write it here. Collecting duct we are talking about, okay, collecting, collecting duct, okay. And it is sensitive, collecting duct is sensitive to vasopressin hormone, vaso, V-A-S-S-O, P R E S S I N vasopressin. It is also known as vasopressin, also known as an ADH hormone. ADH. Okay. That is, you know, what is meant by ADH? It is anti diuretic hormone. So, anti-diuretic hormone, meaning in your diuresis, you know about if you have more of urine which is going passing by, so that is the uresis, right? So, uretic. But if you stop that, that's called anti-diuretic, meaning if this one uh, will, will enhance the water absorption from the collecting duct, it increases. Okay, the evasopressin or ADH increases the water recovery, water reabsorption from the urinary duct. Suppose if the ADH hormone is failure or there is no ADH, what will happen? If whatever you drink and getting from the plasma, 179 liters inter reabsorbed, you get 170s absorbed, only 10 liters, right? I mean, just in a matter of fact, I mean, whatever drink water, water is not getting to the blood, it is coming through the urine. So you have more of urine problem over there. Because so sometimes what happened, the ADH deficiency uh, mistakenly taken by diabetes, because in diabetes also the patient can go more, most uh, urination, but in the ADH deficiency also, uh, you know, the patients will go uh, more urination, but without any glucose. And uh, this is diabetes uh, insipidious, that's what they call it. But that's a different issue, don't worry about that. But um, now we will see about what is the function of antidiuretic hormone. And this antidiuretic hormone, which is further, it is normally, it is secreted, secreted from brain. So brain is the site where the antidiuretic hormone is synthesized. And uh, uh, water permeability or water permeation, I call it water permeation, water reabsorption permeation is regulated by regulated by vasopressin hormone, vasopressin that is from brain. It is regulated because the protein transport are called aquaporin, okay, which is, uh, is transported by osmosis, but it is facilitated by aquaporin because the water absorption, reabsorption is taking place through the vasopressin acting through water absorption in the collecting duct, okay, water absorption through a transporter. They call it as aquaporin, A-Q-U, aquaporins. Aquaporins is the proteins, they are transporter proteins that take the water from the collecting duct and push back onto the blood. So if there is a defect in the aquaporin, then it's a problem. So, this vasopressin or the ADH hormone will act on the aquaporin and take increased more of water transport. But in another sense, water is still transported or across water, is, water transport is regulated by, transport is otherwise regulated by osmosis. Right? If uh, higher the concentration of uh, the salt, when the water will move from one to the other direction. So this also been possible, but it is mainly facilitated in the collecting duct through aquaporin. So water is the one substance that is reabsorbed. 
another substance is reabsorbed is sodium okay so water is reabsorbed h2o reabsorbed reabsorbed and another one reabsorbed which you have seen sodium ion reabsorbed okay and it is a passive this sodium absorption like a passive diffusion like a passive uptake carry back to the body and it is regulated by the sodium absorption and it is regulated by regulated by aldosterone hormone aldosterone hormone okay and the which affect the aldosterone level which will affect the sodium permeability you more of aldosterone you get more of sodium reabsorption and maintain the level and if this aldosterone level is going mad or is going back or if it is not functioning properly or the hormone aldosterone then the sodium permeability is also been affected so you will excrete more of sodium and the third molecules which is reabsorbed is urea okay the third molecule or substance molecule we have seen uh, water sodium and third molecule here is urea so this is somewhat a contradiction since uh, we want to get it off the urea okay so we want to get rid of get rid of urea okay but if you reabsorb urea what will happen so that's what is a contradiction okay but in this case it's going back into the tissue for maintaining osmotic gradient we want to get rid of urea but it is reabsorbed for a certain function this urea is reabsorbed for a function and that function that's when they go back okay to the tissue you go, can go back to the tissue for maintaining for maintaining osmotic gradient osmotic gradient maintaining osmotic gradient or osmolarity in the pyramid osmolarity in the pyramidal cell we have seen that earlier pyramidal cells okay so there are some specific urea transporters are present and protein transporters are present and they are sensitive to vasopressin okay so there are specific i put it like that urea transporters trans Protars. and uh, also you get the protein transporters protein also been reabsorbed protein transporters present in the fossil tube in the, in the collecting tank transporters so if there is a, a, um, a defect in the transporting mechanism or in the membrane or the collecting duct is damaged so these transporters is not going to be active in place so protein is excreted in urine that is called a protein urea and that is again a kidney damage uh, diagnostic protocol okay so all this the transporters are these urea transporter protein transporters and they are sensitive to vasopressin sensitive to vasopressin hormone so in total collecting duct collecting duct okay it has enormous function enormous function of what on enormous function on the reabsorption reabsorption of what h2o or water 
sodium ion and urea. That's very important, collecting them. That's the function to do that, reabsorption. So they are hormonally regulated, this collecting deck now. They are hormonally, hormonally regulated, regulated. Why? Regulated to control the blood pressure. Why there is a regulation? I write it there. Why there is a regulation? Regulated to maintain blood pressure and blood osmolarity and blood osmolarity, okay. And the regulation mainly due to this regulation is mainly due to the water, the amount of water that is uh, recovered, right? Okay. The regulation mainly due to the amount of water, the amount of water. So, that is very important. Amount of water that are recovered. I want to remind you, we have studied before the terrestrial animals and water living animals and everything. So, here the terrestrial animals where we have to conserve the water molecule or preserve or we do not want to lose much of uh, hydration or uh, water from our body. That is why in the summer time we have to take plenty of water to rehydrate our system. Otherwise, these are the thing we are, we are, we are missing our blood osmolarity, blood pressure, everything. So, we have to make sure that we have to get the enough of water is recovered. So, now the regular the regulation of this excretion, this involved from the filtration and secretion and reabsorption and also in the nephron, right? Yeah. So, so let us see how that is going to be regulated, the regulation of the whole of the secretion and absorption. So, that is the part that we are going to look into now. So, regulation in excretion, regulation in the excretion involve filtration, right? Regulation in excretion of the substance involves filtration, okay. So, as I mentioned before, if you recollect this, diagram where we got the pores, where the filtering mechanism, filter, filter, and then here number two, secretion, and then number three is reabsorption, reabsorption, and this is the collecting duct. And the nephron, if you see the same pattern in the nephron, filtration of everything entering into the nephron, all of them which is going through that, okay, the nephron, I, I, I draw like this like this as a Bowman's capsule which is going over there, okay. And then what happened? There is a loop coming over here and then uh, distal tubules, okay, and then it is a collecting duct. So, this is the pattern, okay. All of the plasma, I put all, 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 all of them, right, A, L, L, all. So, all of the blood plasma, say here the, you, you, you have a blood vessel which is coming in, okay. All of them are transported, everything, plasma, everything in plasma, not RBC, but all the water present in the plasma which is came, getting into the Bowman capsules. And then here the secretion, as I mentioned before, here in these tubules, secretion of toxins, toxins are secreted, okay. And also, you know, in the, there is a little bit of, uh, uh, of uh, amino acids water and also amino acid, glucose reabsorbed, glucose and, and absorbed, okay, here. So, now you got the toxins as like a ammonia and everything is secreted. Now, this loop, we will see this loop, what happened in this loop, we will see that this is a very interesting phenomena. 
And then what happened? The proximal tubules, what we have seen now, the water is recovery and sodium is recovered here. And here you get the more of potassium is goes in. When the sodium is out, potassium is going into the lumen. Okay. And when it goes by, what happened here? The recovery of water. Here also recovery of water and recovery of sodium, which you have seen, and then recovery of urea. So, urea is finally secreted out, okay, and it's been reabsorbed here. So, active secretion of toxins here, ammonia and also phosphate ion, then active recovery of amino acids, glucose molecule and also we did uh, uh, with the water and then bicarbonate active CHCO3 minus and calcium ions reabsorbed. And then the distal tubules is the recovery of sodium here, recovery of sodium in distal tubules and the secretion of potassium. This is in the distal tubules in secretion of potassium. Okay. And in the collecting duct, we have seen about the water recovery, sodium recovery and urea recovery. So, when you see this structure and this, you know, either both structures are, are you know, are the similar one when compared to this one here. So, this is the filter, secretion and reabsorption. This structure, cartoon is similar to what this is there. Is that true? So, we ignore about the loop now. So, this is the one, but it looks like this up to this. But we ignore this loop, right, so far. So, what happens in the loop? This is the loop of Henle. Loop of Henle. H E N L E, Henle. We now, we, we have to study what happened in the loop of Henle. So, a lot of attention is going on what happens in the loop of Henry. That's what we want to do. We want to study because it creates a concentration gradient and it uh, explains all the details. We'll see now in our lecture now. Okay. Study about the loop of Henley where you get a concentration gradient. Concentration gradient. Now, what is gradient? You know about, you know, it's not like a one, if you made a one, 1000 for example, and then on a, uh, 700, 500, 200, 400, 200 and 100. So, it, th there is a yeah, grades of 100, 200, 300 up to that 1000. So, there is a gradation of uh, changing in the osmolarity or the concentration of uh, the fluid secretion or the excretion and that the process which is occurring in the loop of Henle and that we call it as a, as a concentration gradient. Okay. Let us draw a picture so that you can easily understand now. So, I am drawing a just, this is coming in the proximal tubules where the glomerular filtrate, I am not drawing all those, but I am just drawing like this, okay, the loop coming over here, okay, and just is a little bit of narrowing down and then it's going down, 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 down and then the loop starts from here, it's here, the loop and then uh, it goes like this, okay, the loop, Henley the loop, over here and then it's a little bit broader in a sense, it goes over there and then it goes there and then you have a distal tubules and you have a collecting tubules. So, we have seen this path and this path, but we are going to look into this path, okay. So, we will divide in this region in a different one, okay. Up to this part is the region 1, okay, in the loop up to this and uh, from here, the loop start from here. Okay, and uh, up to this part or the half of this. This is the region number two. This region we call it as a region number three. Okay, 
So at this region, you find a different concentration gradient is been established when the filtered and reabsorbed product of the urine is coming over here. Let us see the establishment of the concentration gradient. The differential properties at the length, this the whole length, the differential properties at its length. And the loop of Henle it is the balance by, I mean, it is being uh, balanced in the, in the three regions, right? And let us see these regions in a different order, like a one, two, three order. And differences in the tissues, and where uh, I'll draw a, a, a dark line over the difference in the region, okay? Region number one, we will see region number one is called thick ascending limb, okay? We'll see that one here. Region one, what happened in the region one? And it is called, region one is called thick ascending limb, isn't it? Because when you see, this is a thick one, here yeah, thick. And this is the ascending loop because this uh, urine is coming up up here. So the thick ascending limb. Okay. It is a region where active secretion of sodium by sodium potassium ATPase. Okay. It is a region where where active secretion active secretion of sodium ion, active secretion of sodium by what? Sodium, potassium, ATPase. Okay. This is very important because ATPase is an energy, energy driven force of establishing the concentration gradient. It is very important because it helps or you can hear a driving force okay of establishing establishing concentration gradient because we are going to discuss about much of the what the concentration gradient is that one okay now region number two Region 2. This is the descending limb, okay? Descending limb. See, when you see the picture, this is the one descending because the, this is the Bowman capsule which is coming out, coming out, and proximal tubules, and this is coming here, right? Descending limb. It is permeable to water. It is permeable to water and it is not permeable, it is not permeable, permeable to sodium ion. So that's the beauty. It is not permeable to sodium, but it is permeable to water. And this difference is very critical for functioning of loop of Henle. This not permeable to sodium, okay, and this is very critical, very critical for functioning of loop of Henle. So, water leaves in the descending limb, so the water leaves in the descending limb by osmosis. Now, H2O here, water leaves in the descending limb, descending limb by osmosis, osmosis. See, when um, when 
water is there, right? When the plasma is being secreted or, or filtered out, more of water is coming here. And, and, and this, when, come back, when, when coming to this part, the no sodium is reabsorbed. So at the same time, what happened here in the body surface here inside the cells, uh, this from this tubule, descending tubule, the water is gradually is going up is permeable. So water is permeable. So water is, is getting getting back. The water leaves the descending limb and this leaves, this process is osmotic process. This leaves. So when water leaves, what will happen? Rest of the compounds being concentrated. If more water is there removed, so you get it is being concentrated. So it's slowly it is getting concentrated in this limb. Osmosis. Then we will see on to the Region 3, region 3 what happened? It is a thin ascending limb, is the thin ascending limb, okay, thin ascending limb. I will show that one here, see, this region. So this is a descending, coming down here, descend, 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 and this is going there, the loop, okay. And then it's slowing up, up, up. So it is called the ascending. Thin, but it's an ascending limb. Thin ascending limb. It is different from region 2, right? It is different from region 2, this region. And it is not permeable. It is very interesting. It is not permeable to, it is not permeable to water and compared to region 2, that's permeable to water, but region 3 is not permeable to water, okay. But it is permeable to sodium, it is permeable to sodium. So please study carefully. I have got more questions on this. Uh, Henley the loop, okay? Henley loop, loop of Henley. Uh, the region three, ascending limb. You get water is not permeable, but at the same time it is permeable to sodium, okay? So in in region three, sodium is diffuses out. How the transporter diffuses out, but it does not allow any water to pass. It does not allow, it's a diffusion process, allow water to pass on there. So that's very strict. So as the liquid moves through the region 2 to, to 3, I'll, I'll get the picture, as it moves from region 2 to the region 3, Okay, the sodium decreases when it's moved from here. There's only water is absorbed by osmosis on region two, but sodiums are there. But sodium is not going through. Only when when passing through, the sodium is going here. Sodium is coming here, but no water is not. Okay, sodium when passing through, sodium decreases out because more sodium, more sodium, more sodium is is, is coming out. So what happened in this sodium decreases see, inside the lumen. The sodium concentration is decreases inside the lumen. You follow now? And, and, and the next part when the sodium is in the since the sodium contributes, sodium in the inside is contribute the osmolarity, okay, main osmolarity of the fluid. So for example, 300 milli osmolar for, from the blood and what will happen when it, it reaches the bottom of the loop here? It starts from here, 300 milli osmolar from the blood, okay? And this milli osmolar from the blood, the concentration of this all of the diluter and everything. Now the water is being absorbed here, right? By osmosis, water is being transferred across. So more water is there, so solute concentration is there, sodium is there. At the concentration of the sodium, it, it reaches the bottom of the loop, 1,200 milli osmolar polarity, bottom of the loop. 
But now in the ascending loop, what happens here, the sodium is diffuses out, more sodium is coming out, more sodium is out, 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 out. When sodium is out and then it reaches at the top, it is going to reach how much? It's 100 milli osmolar. 100 milli osmolar. So bottom is one concentration at the bottom here. But when ascending loop, because the sodium is diffused out, but no water is not removing from here. So what will happen? The osmolarity concentration decreases out because the osmolarity concentration is the sodium is the one, the molecule which determine the osmolarity. When when we descending down at the region two, sodium is not absorbed, only water. So you get concentrated. And then with the ascending loop in region 3, sodium is reabsorbed. I mean, it's getting by diffuses out from the loop. It's going out. So what happened? The osmolarity decreases when you up, you get that from 1,200 milliosmolar to 1,000 milliosmolar when it ascending the loop. So when you, when you see in the action of this picture, okay, we will see. In a, in, a, in, in, in a very broad uh, way like that, you know, like this, okay, just put it over there, I'm just to draw here, the same loop, there. all right, now, 300 milliosmolar, Concentration gets in here. Okay, this is a region two. This is a region two, right? This is a region two. I put the region two, and this is a region three, and this is a region one. I put it over there. Over there. Yeah. So what happened here? Water is removal. Water is removing. Water is removing. Water is removing in all this space. But what will happen here, this is also water is removing H2O by osmosis is going out in this region too. But the sodium concentration is a concentrated out, sodium, more sodium, more sodium, more sodium, more sodium, which is there, sodium is going to be there. So at the end, at the bottom, you get more of sodium, more sodium there. And it reaches the, uh, how much the concentration here? 1,200 milli osmolar. This is the concentration at the bottom. So it started ascending at this juncture. This loop will permeate only for sodium. So now sodium is out. Sodium is out. Sodium is out. And sodium is out. And uh, when here, when, at the top, you get of the ATPs, ATP, rest of the amount, you know, most of the sodium is out, but so sodium concentration is more here, but when you have to uh, spend much energy, right, to go against the concentration gradient. So rest of the sodium is also coming out by active transport. Here the diffusion and here the active transport and remove of rest of the sodium ion. And then here also the sodium is removed. So consider the three regions and the liquid enters on 300 milli osmolar concentration. Region 1, sodium is transporter, is transporter at the expense of, uh, uh, of, uh, of the ATP, the region 1. Here, this is the region 1. This is the region 1 where the sodium is transported across by the expense of ATP because the, we have to remove the excess. So this creates a higher concentration of sodium in the extracellularly. So sodium, all sodium is coming out here. So what happened? All the sodium which is there in the extracellular compartment, you have more concentration of sodium or extracellular than inside. Here you have a less sodium, but here is a more sodium outside. In region two, water removes, okay, moves from out, moves out by osmosis because of the membrane permeable to water, but the concentration outside the sodium as the fluid tends to descend, this uh, limb two, the sodium concentration tend to increase and that reaches the 1,200 millimolar. At the bottom, water permeable, this here, in this one, here water permeability stop, no water. 
no water permeability at the bottom, only it is done here. And at region 3, at the bottom here, here you got more of sodium is diffuses out to the neighboring extracellular space. And concentration of sodium gets smaller and smaller when the, the limb assembles. So here the small, small, small sodium uh, about there. And finding at the region number 1, you have this sodium is squeezes out. Even one or two fraction of sodium that also been squeezes out by ATP. That's what I just want to make sure. So in the last bit of sodium is removed. Then the final concentration of sodium is going to be in this limb is going to be 100 milli osmolar. Okay. And the final strand is the, the recover of the sodium at the final stage here 20 to 30 percent of sodium is recovered. In region 1, no water is recovered. Imagine, in region 1, no water is recovered here. But region 1 has, uh, interestingly, they are the co-transporters of the region 1, okay. You will see the co-transporter in the region 1, okay, where the potassium, this is blood, uh, the extracellular space and this transporter where you get the antiport mechanism is the sodium is getting in. So here the lumen, here the sodium and two chloride and potassium where it will go like this. There's a core transport mechanism. Sodium is going in and here the potassium is going in and the chloride ion, two chloride ion can also pass it through. Okay. So the movement of sodium out increases the extracellular sodium so that the extracellular sodium is going to be more and that helps the osmotic movement of water. So it helps the osmotic movement. You see, the excess sodium outside the lumen, okay, or the extracellular space, that drives the osmosis, or it helps the osmosis, okay. The differential amount of sodium and water in the descending loop or the concentration gradient is established. See the descending loop and the ascending loop of the Henle, you get the sodium gradient and water gradient which is uh, which is being occurred there. Now let us uh, see on to the collecting duct. Okay, what happened in the collecting duct? Collecting duct. As you know, in the cartoon which we draw here, the loop and loop here, and then it's going over there. So this is the collecting duct. What happened there? They have a short microvilli, microvilli. So that increases the surface area for absorption. So here, see the water permeability controlled by aquaporin. Okay, water permeability controlled by, controlled by the collecting duct by aquaporin, which you have seen uh, quite a while ago, aquaporin. This allows, this part of the aquaporin, this allows the facilitated osmosis, facilitated osmosis by water. It gives a facilitator osmosis. Okay. This is regulated by, again, again we have seen before, it's regulated by vasopressin, ADH hormone, right? And also vasopressin, it acts through, it acts through cyclic AMP process. And to phosphorylate, the cyclic AMP phosphorylate, phosphorylate a protein, phosphorylate a protein, and, and, and that phosphorylate protein will, will regulate. The cells have different aquaporin in the, in the membrane, okay. Let's say I, I'd like to get a cartoon of that one. Suppose this is the cell, okay, and here the aquaporin and this is a blood uh, surface here and this is the lumen surface 
So each one here this is one type of aquaporin, aquaporin 2 and here aquaporin 3, okay. So in the cells have different aquaporin in different membranes. So here the blood side aquaporin 3 and the lumen side they are different type of protein, uh, same function is the same but the different type of protein aquaporin maybe the gene may be different over there. So aquaporin, um, aquaporin and this protein will have a molecular weight of 29 kilo Dalton in the molecular weight, okay. They are relatively small protein but they are transmembrane protein, transmembrane protein, transmembrane protein, okay. And how they form the transmembrane protein across the membrane, suppose this is the lipid bilayer membrane, well, this is one layer, this is another layer and this protein will go like this, as I mentioned before there are seven domains like this, you know, transmembrane like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, like that. It goes over there. So there are seven folding, and this is, this is the aquaporin which is present over there. Okay. So this is the way it looks like this. Okay. Where in the across the membrane it forms and transport the water. So the fold. They form the globular structure and, and thereby, you know, this is a folding, but the folding in a way that it, it form the globular protein, okay, and facilitate the water movement across, something like that. If you see if this is a double membrane and this is the folded aquaporin is inside and it passing through the water which is from H2O. And here this is the blood, uh, from the lumen side to the blood side. So the water, it has been recovered in a, you know, in, in, in a, in a descent through a concentration gradient, water. For example, if I, if I draw like this, okay, okay, this is a descending loop, okay. Now water which is coming out, water is coming out, water, water, more water, more water is coming out. So what happened here, the, when water is coming out, okay, what moves out by osmosis as it occurs, the urea concentration increases in the blood when water by osmosis which is coming here, when the urea concentration increases, okay. And then if more urea, and then the urea and by diffusion which is coming up, okay, which is more urea concentration then it will go there. As it occurs, the urea concentration increases in blood. If it increases in the blood, okay, there are urea transporters, and uh, the urea transporters. And these urea transporting protein, they have a 55 kilo Dalton kD kilo Dalton. This molecular weight, urea transporters, and they will push this urea back. Okay, and urea diffuses by. And uh, in the pyramid, the lower region where the, the urea contributing for the osmosis, urea transporters, and uh, they, they form, you know, suppose if these are pyramidal cells, okay, and here this urea transport over there in the lower region, and this contribute more of much of this urea transporting, you know, from the avoid the excess of urea, so it has been transported ac across into the lumen. So urea transporters can occur as the gene duplications, I mean the, the, there are there are some mechanism, we are going to talk about now about the urea transporters, how this urea transporters is formed in the, in the system or in the body. They can occur, u urea transporters, they can occur by a gene duplication process, duplication process. Okay, they have two types of, suppose this is the one, the urea transporters something transmembrane, the another uh, type of urea transporters like this and then like this it goes over there. So this is the urea transporter one and this is urea transporter number two. Okay, this is the way it naturally it occurs in the body. 
So now you may wonder if do you think that the, the loop is necessary into our system, meaning in our in our loop of Henley. The question, the critical thinking question, I'm just, you see, loop, is it necessary? Yes, it is necessary to recover as well as for the concentration gradient, right? 60 to 70 percent of water is recovered, recovered at proximal tubules, proximal tubules. That's, that also it induces 300 milli r small r to 1200 milli r small r. For that the loop is necessary, milli r small r. Water is recovered. During this phase, water is recovered. Listening loop, 70 to 99 percent recovered. The length of the loop of Henley is very important in the adaptation for animal to concentrate of urine. Okay, now why we need to have the loop? The loop is the one is is very important is is very important in adaptation okay. in the in the adaptation process in the adaptation of what for animals to concentrate urine to concentrate urine as well as the water recovery okay concentrate urine the now the, the length of the loop is the length of the loop length of the loop okay the length of the loop is directly proportional to proportional to, directly proportional to the degree of concentration, to the degree of concentration. Degree of concentration, that is meaning, I'll, I'll explain in a different way, that is shorter the loop, shorter the loop, shorter the loop, okay, then you get the, the lesser lesser the gradient, lesser the gradient. So, loop is necessary. Longer the loop, if it is a longer, longer the loop, what happens? You get a greater gradient established, greater gradient, gradient is established. greater, longer the loop, you get greater the gradient. That's very important here. So, loop is necessary. The example, in kangaroo rat, sorry, kangaroo rat, I put it in an example, I'll give you. Example, in kangaroo rat, kangaroo rat, okay, a yeah, desert, a yeah, desert mammal, this animal, making extremely concentrated urine, extremely concentrated urine and it has a long, extremely long loop of Henley, loop of Henley. Without the loop of Henley, we can only concentrate our urine near the blood osmolarity. So, that's very important. So, without, without the loop of Henley, what happens in our body? We can only concentrate our urine, concentrate our urine near approximately near the blood concentration of 300 milli osmolar. So, we don't need to, you know, we cannot preserve water or reabsorb water without the loop of Henley. 
and we exist at 300 milli osmolar out of the blood and that is going to be going back onto the urine. So, it is a derivation of loop of Henle that allow onto the concentration urine much greater extent than our blood. So, we have to have the loop of Henle to concentrate and to eliminate some of the bad products from our body. So, the toxic system or excretory system will be very useful, quite useful when the loop of Henle is in place. Now, I will uh, discuss in the class uh, um, about the about the regulation regulation of uh, kidney function. Probably I will explain this in, a, in the next part of my lecture about this regulation of kidney function.